This video is sponsored by New Masters Academy. Learn to draw, paint, or sculpt from the world's best artists. New Masters Academy offers a professional art school equivalent education from the comfort of your home. New Masters Academy is affordable, a fraction of the cost of traditional art school. New Masters Academy courses are taught by top professional artists and instructors with decades of experience in both the fine art and entertainment art fields. New Masters Academy offers courses suitable for beginners as well as professionals with resources including over 1,500 hours of structured art courses, interactive live classes and certificates, downloadable course attachments, member-only community perks, over 50,000 professional reference images, over 100 interactive 3D reference models. You can share your successes and struggles on New Masters Academy's public forums or interact live through New Masters Academy's Discord channel. Get portfolio reviews, personalized learning plans, career advice, and more with optional one-on-one -on -one coaching. Every course is included with your subscription and all courses are available for unlimited streaming. Go to www.nma.art and start your seven day free trial. You can use the coupon code ARTPROF at checkout to save 20% off your subscription. Hello everybody. Today we are doing a drawing tutorial using pen pastels drawing Baron Harkonnen from the new Dune movie. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here, art prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We are going to be working from the two reference photos in the lower left-hand corner. And if you would like to download those images, the link to those photos is in the YouTube video description below, because I would love for all of you to draw along with me and then hang out in the Discord afterwards so I can see what you made. Let's talk about pen pastels because this is a totally new material that I'm actually not familiar with at all. And I wanna say thank you to Pan Pastel for providing all of the materials for this tutorial. Tell me in the chat, who here has heard of Pan Pastels? Who here has seen them but hasn't gotten a chance? And who here has never heard of them and doesn't know what I'm talking about? Let me just give you a quick primer because pen pastels are pretty cool. I'm the type of person I'm very suspicious of new art supplies, but so far I really like these a lot. So the first thing is that they are ultra soft colors. They blend like paint for an infinite palette of colors. And there are 92 different kinds of colors that they have, and they're also light fast. That is a really good thing to know about. And also, I was very happy about this. They're very low dust. And that's such a game changer for anybody who uses soft pastels. You can totally erase them. And what's really fun about these, so they come in these plastic palettes. And they have like a cover like this, so you can keep this on top when you're storing it. But when you're actually working with them, you can hold it like this. But then this is the really cool thing is that every single color comes in its own little container like this, and you can totally customize your palette however you want. And they also have all these different sets. So for example, this one is a starter set. This one's awesome. This is the one I'm gonna use today. This is a palette made for Baron Harkonnen. And they also have other sets. This is an awesome set, check this out. So this is a 20 color tint set. And you can see here, it's just these really subtle shifts of very light tones. And I'm really stoked to give those a try. And I have to say the Pan Pastel people, they have done such a great job of providing literature and resources I love that they have this whole section here in their brochure where they lay out all the different types of tools. So they have sponge applicators, they have knives and covers, there's all these visuals. So they've really, I think, done a great job of helping people get to know their materials. And color dorks, <laughs> I love this stuff. Check this out. So they have this here as an example, but then, they have this like worksheet for you to do. And so when you open the worksheet, you can like try out the Zorn palette. You can do the temperature worksheet. 
I mean, this is like super fun. <laughs> Mega art nerd stuff. And then they have just all kinds of other artists who work with pen pastel in different styles. Here's a technique for image transfer. I mean, I could just look at this stuff all day. It's really, really cool. And then Pan Pestel actually sent me this really cool book by Julia Woning. It's a pretty big book. I mean, it really goes through all of the various tools that they offer. And it's super fun to see all those different examples. So they've really done a great job, I think, of equipping artists with the tools and the resources they need to really understand their material well. All right, let's talk a little bit about surfaces. I thought what we would do first is just play with the pan pastel because I've never really used it that much. What I did do last night, because I didn't want to embarrass myself on the live stream, was I just did this quick little sketch I mean, this was like just in front of the TV. I wasn't really <laughs> looking that hard, but I just wanted to see how it functioned. And I'm so glad that I did it on Yupo paper because the Yupo paper, it's very slick and very soft. And one of the pan pastel tools is this applicator and it just glides across so well. Because I noticed that if you use like a coarse paper with the pan pastel, like especially these applicators, or they have all kinds of sponges. These are fairly sensitive, which is what makes them really good. But the thing is, if you use them on like really coarse paper, they're gonna get torn up pretty quickly. And so that's why I like the Yupo paper, the Yupo paper is just really, really soft and gentle on these applicators. And so you don't have to worry about them getting all torn up like that. So I might actually use this piece to try out a couple of things that I was thinking about earlier. All right, let's take some of this and I just want to show you some of the applicators because they have all these cool sponges and they're all different sizes. I mean, I feel like I'm in a candy store. <laughs> this is just so fun. Oh my gosh. So they have a bunch of different things. They come like this, like this one is an applicator and it's almost like a brush handle, but then they have these replacements that you can put on top of them. I mean, they have these little ones. I mean, this to me, it looks more like makeup supplies than it does like art supplies, but awesome. I think that's great. And then they have these art sponges and these come in all different types of sizes. I've actually tried to use makeup sponges in the past. And honestly, they were just a little bit too stiff. I really like the feel of this. I mean, I seriously feel like this should be a stress ball or something. Like I could just sit here and hold this like, all day. This is just fabulous. So these are all the sponges. And let me just show you really briefly what they look like. So let's just try this. And I will stop and take breaks and look at the chat. I just want to get going a little bit before we do that. Oh, that feels really good. <laughs> look at that. Isn't that incredible? Oh, it's just, it's a really sensitive sponge. I mean, I barely touched the Yupo paper and it immediately made a mark. Oh my God, it's so good on the Yupo paper. I love that. And then this is a really cool triangular sponge. Actually, the person who introduced me to Pan Pastel was my friend, Kathy Speranza, who is in this charcoal and pencil tutorial on how to draw roses. And she does use the pan pastel sponges. She also uses the applicator. And so if you want to see her technique for using it with charcoal, I would definitely take a look at that tutorial. All right, I'm curious to know about this one because it's so gigantic. I'm not totally sure I would use it unless I was really making something gigantic. Oh, that's pretty nice. I'm curious to know how the erasers work. So I have a bunch of erasers here. This is a Faber-Castell dust-free eraser. And by the way, the links to all these art supplies, they're in the video description below if you want to look them up. Oh, wow. It does erase very easily. And then let's see what the eraser stick does. 
Oh, it's great. And you get such a crisp edge because of the Yupo paper. And now let's try, this is a Mars plastic eraser. Oh, it's great. And you see, I'm taking the dust off, but it's not totally ruining the entire image. So that's really nice to see. And then they also have a couple of fun things, like this is pearlescent. And so if I were to take this one and dip it in here, I mean, you can't see this on the video. Maybe I can show it later in the Discord, but it does have this listening quality to it. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering about this because I just put all this magenta into the white and then it's like, oh no, I ruined the white. Well, what they said to do was if you just take a paper towel and you just wipe off the top, that totally takes care of it. So that's a good way to keep the colors nice and clean. And then these applicators, these are really cool. I mean, you basically take them, it's sort of like a really soft palette knife. I guess that's what it is. In the premium tracks that we're running right now, one of the tracks that we're running is the painting track. And a lot of people have been doing palette knife paintings in there. Wow, that is awesome. Does everybody see? Like you can really see the red underneath the blue and the blue really becomes a glaze that goes on top. So that's actually very transparent. I mean, I think that's what they're talking about in a lot of the pamphlets about how this really is more like painting than it is like drawing. Yeah, and this is great for blending because you could do it like this and play with all the different directions. Okay, that feels really good. <laughs> I like this, this is really good sensory experience, which I'm very happy about. Let's quickly try some regular paper. I just want to see what the difference is in terms of how it feels. I mean, the whole thing about drawing, it's all about touch. You really want to feel the paper. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that's really beautiful. Do you see how it really picks up? the coarseness. Oh, look at that. So this is a completely different experience on the charcoal paper versus the Yupo paper. So what I would say, if you're gonna use pan pastels, really think about your surface because this is almost a totally different experience on the charcoal paper versus the Yupo paper. Ooh, that's really cool. Oh, and the blending is so easy here. Okay, so this is interesting. If you look at the Yupo paper, this really felt more like watercolor paper, like the layers were more distinct. This one, not so much. You'll notice that when I started putting a color over another color, I mean, you can still see it for sure, but I don't think it's as clear as it is in the Yupo paper. But I like both. I think I would pick them for different reasons. I think if I want something that maybe looks more washy, I probably would use the Yupo paper. If I want something that looks more like charcoal, something more powdery, I probably would use the charcoal paper. Let's see what people are talking about in the chat. And by the way, this is very exciting, everybody, that through tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a very generous donor who will match your donation up to $2,000 through tonight. If you're going to pledge to our raffle, now is the time, <laughs> okay? I mean, certainly, we're never going to complain anytime you want to pledge, but this donor is going to match your donation, and that's kind of a big deal for us. So please think about pledging before midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. By the way, thank you so much to Jill Kama for the super sticker. And I believe I saw another one from RB Dick. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Now I owe you guys two emoji animations. All right, let's see what people are talking about in the chat regarding pan pastel. Hania says, my subscription sketchbox came with some pastel sticks and these pan pastel applicators, 
but no pan pastel. I like the applicators to blend the sticks though. I mean, you totally do not have to have these, but let me tell you, these are very different than soft pastels. To me, they're a lot smoother. You know how sometimes you're using a chalk pastel and there's like a little hard part in it, or also depending on the brand you're using. Some of the brands are not that soft. Actually, this is really, really soft. This is like baby's bottom soft. Like everything is soft. The sponges, the applicator, like everything is just so rounded and soft. It's fabulous for that. So Blue Wolf is asking, would Bristol board give the same or similar result? I think it would probably be similar, but from my experience, at least, the Yupo paper is just a little bit more slick. So when I talk about using the Yupo paper on top, I feel like the Yupo paper, it's more like it glides across the surface. It has a very different feel than if I go here and I do that, there's a little bit of resistance. Like when I'm on the Yupo paper, there's no resistance. Like it's just, it's like ice skating practically. And then this is also interesting too. This is the exact same color, but does everybody see how the value is a lot darker on the charcoal paper? Now on the Yupo paper, it's actually not that dark. Let me see if I can get it really dark. Yeah, that that's sort of the darkest it's going to get. Let's see how dark I can get on the charcoal paper. Okay, so on the charcoal paper, you can make it black. So I guess that's something I would really try to be aware of, which is that on the Yupo paper, the range of dark you can get is a little bit limited. Although I have some ideas for how to fix that because I think there are definitely some things we could do to change that. And thank you so much, Sarah Silva, for the super sticker. You guys are amazing. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Mark Conan. Okay, now you have to tell me who here saw Dune. <laughs> I watched it on Sunday, so it's fairly fresh in my mind. But I'm just curious because I, I have a lot of, I always have opinions. I mean, I'm not like a Dune fan. I, I didn't watch it when I was 14 and I didn't have my life transformed because of it, like some people, but that's okay. That's fine. By the way, I, I was just thinking some of you might want to see how I do the reference photos. I used to put them on my laptop, but I thought today I'd do it on my phone because what I like about the phone is that I can really zoom in and look up close because actually the thing about this image is that it's a really dark image. It's super high contrast where you have the highlight, but that's kind of it. And so I was having trouble figuring out <laughs> what reference photo to use. That's why I asked on YouTube and people had all kinds of opinions. It's great to hear why people thought which one I should pick. And the thing is I like the facial expression in this one more because his face is a little bit lopsided, but you know what I don't like about this photo? I don't like that the section down here at the bottom, you don't see a lot of it. And even the other photo I had where you could see more of it, there wasn't a lot going on. So I think I'm going to do a combination of this photo with this photo. So I'm going to use most of the head and the shoulder here, but I'm going to use this very soft looking reflective quality. But I'm going to try to translate it over to this one because, oh man, this was really fun to do. It was like, oh, it felt great. And I didn't even spend a lot of time on this. So I'm excited to take a much deeper dive into what I could do there. And so I think it's a great example that you don't always need to stick to one photo because sometimes the one photo, it, it's missing something and you like something in another photo better. So always feel free to do that. And by the way, in the reference photo folder in the YouTube video description, there's a whole bunch of Baron Harkonnen. So if you want to do the one where he's like floating up in the sky, go ahead. It's just a Baron Harkonnen party that we're going to be having today. All right. I 
think hmm, I'm trying to figure out, I may want to start with the applicator just because I feel like the sponges are maybe a little bit too big. And at least in the beginning, I want to start with a little bit more control. And I'm going to play with the colors more because even though this is very much a, a very monochromatic image, I still think that it would be nice to play with color. Oh dear, that already feels so dark. Sheesh. You know what I'm going to do? Maybe I should just have a scrap piece of Yupo paper here so I can like, oh my God, there's so much. Like I barely touched the pan pastel and it picked up so much pigment. So, okay, these applicators, they're very, very sensitive, which is fantastic. But I think maybe here having this test sheet of paper would be really nice to have because this is like, oh, that's way too much. Did not want that. Okay, let's just jump in. I'm gonna change the composition a little bit too. Although this guy has great shoulders. Hmm. I gotta think about sizing too, though. I don't wanna get him too large because the shoulders are such an important part of his character. But then again, I do wanna leave enough space. Okay, so I need to work on the spacing a little bit better. Let's see if I can wipe this away. Oh no, I guess you can't do that. I guess in theory, I could go in with one of my erasers and erase it. Okay, it erases pretty well. All right, but I don't really need to erase it. I'm just gonna go in and just draw on top of it like this. So who's gonna draw <laughs> Darren Arcone and me? <laughs> like he did this in the movie. I was like, dude, I'm drawing him. <laughs> He's awesome. This guy is so good. <laughs> Cause I, I love the, the mass of his body is really wonderful. I mean, another thing that I'm noticing about the pan pastel is you really can't get uptight with it because the marks that you end up making, they're just so wide. And I think that could be a really good thing. So right now I'm just gonna block out approximately where the facial features are especially the eye sockets, I think are pretty important. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to fuss. I haven't drawn for a while, so I feel a little bit out of shape, but that's all right. Actually, I think I like using it like this more. I, this is sort of uncomfortable trying to hold it like a pencil. I think it's better holding it like a palette knife. So have we formulated an opinion? <laughs> on Dune, I'll tell you my opinion. Okay, I have not read the books, okay? So I cannot claim to have any true knowledge about what it's supposed to be and what the movie represents. I, I don't know any of that. Maybe somebody here is a Dune nerd. Let us know, who's the Dune nerd here? And maybe you can educate the rest of us. My theory is that there was way too much story packed into the first hour and not enough in the second half. I don't know. I just feel like him and his mom were like wandering around for so long. I was like, get to the point, you guys. Like, <laughs> really need to watch you wander around for this long? I mean, I guess it's pretty, but I don't know. Like the beginning, it just, it flowed so fast and there was so much information. I was like, dude, I, I cannot process all this. And yes, I know it's a very complicated story, but you know, we like to complain about movies. So here we are. All right, this is sort of a mess, but you know what I want to do is I just want to get tonal fast. Let me see if this sponge is going to be good for that. Oh, I do like that. So actually in doing this, I'm probably going to end up losing a lot of the drawing that I did, but that's okay because the erasers are amazing on the Yupo paper. It's really impressive how much you can get rid of. Like, you know how on a charcoal drawing, you really can't get back to the absolute wide of the page. You can on the Yupo paper and the 
pen pastel. It's amazing. Like you, you don't usually expect that result. Oh, these are great. Did you see these like really broad lines? Like this is fabulous. It, it's so fast. And actually, I'm glad that the background is somewhat varied because it's lighter over here on this side, but then it's pretty dark on this side. What I'm trying to be very conscious of is these very few ultra bright highlights. I really want those to stay. And so really my technique for doing that is just put tone everywhere. It can be really light, but you have to just cover it. Okay, now based on that, I'm gonna now move to this reference photo. I'm gonna start looking at how the reflection of the highlights goes into the, what is that? Is it oil? I don't know what he was doing. I, I don't know the whole Baron Harkonnen story, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so for now, I'm just going to block it in. I'm not going to do anything that fancy. And color-wise, I'm jumping around. You can see there's a little bit of purple up there. There's quite a bit of brown towards here at the bottom. In fact, I might want to maybe pump it up with a little bit of blue. Oh, now that's turning green. That's okay. I'm just trying to fill right now. So that's a pretty vague beginning, but I don't know. I, I like pulling figures out of the mist. Maybe it's my fascination with Carbaccio. I just really enjoy that. I think I underestimated the scale of his shoulders. And th this is the type of character, it's like you can't not exaggerate him. He's already such a caricature that you have to go over the top. I can already tell I've underestimated the bulk of his shoulder. So I'm beefing that up quite a bit. We'll get back to all the specifics of the face eventually. Where's my needed eraser? I never find my erasers. Ah, here it is. All right, let's take a quick break and see what people are talking about in the chat. All right, Soyton Lee has the lowdown. Baron Harkonnen had a skin disease, so he spent a lot of time in special baths. Lydia says, I'm amazed how quickly you built the structure of the face, made it look dimensional. I always struggle with making things, faces in particular, pop off the page. You know what I think it is, Lydia? I think it's being willing to make a mess. And then because you're willing to make a mess, you can go faster. I think sometimes when you're just worrying about, oh, is the proportion good? Oh, am I getting the likeness? It gets in the way quite often of the drawing process. Oh, I love this tip from Jennifer, who says with pen pastels, you can add other media like colored pencil and you can add water for a more painterly effect. Oh, you can add water? Oh, man. Okay, I'm not going to do it today because honestly, this is enough. <laughs> this is enough for me to play with. But oh, man, I would love to see what that does. My first thought was actually to add these Caran d'Ache crayons just for some detail work. But you know what? When I'm trying a new material that I don't know very well, I just like to sit with just that material. I, I don't like to involve other materials because I feel like it gets in the way of me really understanding that material and what it's doing because I start relying on the other materials to do things when really I should just learn how to do it with the material itself. Panda Puffkin says, I'm drawing along. It's odd to try to capture such a slick texture with a powdery medium. That's a big challenge. I mean, look at him. He's oozing. <laughs> I don't know what he's oozing. He's oozing something. And between that and the skin, I mean, it's just a total carnival 
of textures and surfaces. Tom Kuk says, I love workable fixative for soft pastels, great for building up substantial layers. Yeah, John Murph says, well, you need fixative for this soft pastel. I don't know. I bet you anything, there's something in the literature that Pan Pastel gave me that covers that. I'm sure it's in the book. So maybe somebody, even you can go to their website. The link is in the video description below and get an answer for that. But I will say they were not kidding about less dust. Like this is way cleaner than using the hard soft pastels. So that's a pretty big difference, I think. I'm gonna guess that you're going to need fixative, but I won't really know until I actually try it. Reb Blunt says, Clara, you have already captured the bad Baron. <laughs> not quite, he, he's getting there. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like understand like half of what was going on. I'm like, why is he in a bath? I thought he was killed. <laughs> oh, sorry. Spoilers. If anybody hasn't seen it, you may want to cover your ears for some of the stream. <laughs> Thadia says, think the second half isn't as dense. They're saving a lot of the second half for the next movie. And they focused on phase one of Paul becoming what he's destined to be. Yeah, that's what my husband said, that he like becomes a god eventually. We'll see. What what's the what's the consensus on Timothy Chalamet? I'm just very curious because I mean that's really hard when you're playing this extremely iconic character that people have such strong feelings about. I, I can't imagine that that is easy at all. But based on what I saw, I think he's just a little too pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it, it was like sort of distracting how pretty he is. He He's not like, well, I don't know. I feel sort of icky saying somebody who's like half my age is really good looking because it's kind of gross. But uh, I don't know. He, he's not like hot, like Benedict. He's just, he's just pretty. He's like a nice little, a pretty little rose that you have on the table. <laughs> he's fine. I mean, he wasn't that distracting I suppose but I don't know maybe it's like he was sort of benign like he didn't ruin the movie for me but he also I don't think made it better necessarily I don't know but th then maybe I'm not understanding the whole Paul storyline enough hard to say oh I love this lip Ugh, it's disgusting yuck Although, come on, this must have been an awesome role to play. I think it was Stellan Skarsgård. Although, I don't know, maybe the makeup was terrible. <laughs> Who knows? It's hard to say. Ugh, I think I'm being a little bit too timid. I think I need to get, I think I'm stuck here. I got to move. All right, let's do it. You know, when you catch yourself doing things, you're like getting into the details too soon. You're, yeah, that's totally what I was doing. So I think what I want to do, you know what? I need to fix the shape of the head. I don't think I really got that very well. And then there's this like really deep wrinkle of skin. So I feel like that is a good landmark for me to really emphasize, maybe that's what I need, just a couple of really solid blocked in forms. Because I am feeling like I'm getting too detailed. I don't want that. I don't know, it's a new material, so I'm not being super bold with it. I, I do feel myself being a little bit hesitant, but I can tell you it's so soft that you can really press down a lot and it's not going to mess up your piece. I don't know if I like this shape as much. Let me try the triangle. Maybe I'll like the triangle better. 
Hmm. It's definitely floppier. Okay, so this one, this one on the left, it's a little bit more dense. This one's way squishier. So I guess this one is more easily manipulated by your hands. So if you want to be able to do that, like I can really squeeze this in any direction I want. You can't really do that with the other one. And then I just want to differentiate where the head ends. Oh God, how am I going to do that drippy stuff? <sighs> Who knows? We'll see how far I get. I have no idea. I probably don't want to do something that's super rendered. It was very interesting that a lot of the people who were voting on which reference photo to use, a lot of people were like, oh, you should use the second one because it has way more detail. Now, maybe I'm just a weirdo, but sometimes I don't like using a reference photo that's super detailed because it's detailed to the point that it actually becomes a distraction. Like I, I end up trying to really copy the image instead of interpreting it. And so that's actually one of the reasons I chose this photo is that it doesn't have quite as much information. And for me, I find that pretty liberating. It depends on the person. Not everybody's going to feel that way necessarily. But I know that was my initial reaction was, oh, well, maybe I don't want that detail. By the way, I am not thinking about color. <laughs> I'm just like, ooh, little brown, little purple, whatever. Like, I'm just trying to make sure I don't just do black. But honestly, I think it's because I'm just trying to figure out the material and I don't want to spend lots of time focusing on that. And that's fine. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, well, I, I don't, I just don't want to deal with color today. Okay. I'll, I'll deal with it some other time. But right now, it's not my focus. Right now, I'm trying to get to the material, see what it'll give me. I'm trying to look at the mass. I think what's hard about a lot of this is that there are some parts that are very bony and then there are other parts that are like really textured. So we'll see how this goes. This is all a total shot in the dark as far as I'm concerned. I do find these creases very important. They really, I think, subdivide the face very well. So anybody here, if you do portraits, look for those pockets. They're very helpful. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Sonnet. Thank you so much for the super chat who says, every time I tune into Art Prof, you are using something different. Thank you for opening up my world up to so many different mediums and materials. Well, I'm so happy we can do that for you because you know what? It's so fun for me. <laughs> Maybe I have no attention span, but I, I just love new stuff. To me, it's just the coolest thing. And I know that some people are very resistant to new materials, or I think oftentimes what is more common is people make assumptions about materials. Like they'll look at a material and say, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm an oil painter. What does 3D possibly have to do for me? And the thing is, you don't really know until you try it. And so I think the key is just don't make any assumptions about things. And you might find that that material that you thought was not going to help you helped you a lot. Because when I first started painting, I was like, painting is it. I'm not going to do anything else. And actually, I ended up going to my master's degree doing sculpture because I wanted to make my painting better by studying sculpture. I thought the sculpture might make things a little bit more concrete for me because I did want to do figurative work. And I did want to make pieces that had a sculptural figurative quality to them. And actually, I liked it so much that I never ended going back to painting after that. So you, you never know. And this idea of planning your whole life before you're 25, uh-uh, I don't think so. That is, that is not necessary. 
I need to build the background more. I feel like I'm getting too stuck on the face. Anybody else have that problem? It's like, I don't know. It's like we see a face and we just all get tunnel vision. It's like that's all we can see when we're doing a face sometimes. Okay, and now I'm going to move over to this photo and try to get some of those reflective surfaces down here at the bottom. So what I'm seeing is there's a highlight here. Let me make it a little bit more clear. Okay, so this is a highlight on his body, which in theory would say that there would be a highlight here in the muck, whatever he's in. Oh, now we need to have the, the Dune comparison. So who watched the old one? The one with Kyle McLaughlin and Sting. I feel like I saw it, but if I did, I don't remember anything. <laughs> so I'm probably not a good person to ask about that. There's another highlight here. So what I'm doing is I'm following the highlights on the figure, and then I'm going to put those highlights down here at the bottom. I mean, I am to a certain degree making this up because this is not really in the photo. I'm following some of it, but not all of it. But I think it's more so I can screw around and just do whatever. See, this is interesting. There are so many awesome tools that they have here. They have the applicators. They also have all these cool sponges. And yet somehow... I'm mostly using this. And honestly, I don't think it's because this tool is better. I think it's just easier when you're using a new material not to use 18 tools. I just find it overwhelming. And so it's not because I like this better. I just think right now it's giving me a little bit of stability that I don't have because I'm not that familiar with the material just yet. So this is just needed eraser. I'm just using it to pull out couple of these highlights I, and it literally is the white of the page you won't get that with charcoal paper there's just no chance it doesn't matter how hard you push down and so usually whenever students are working on a charcoal drawing I would say to them listen you really have to plan in advance where you want to retain that white of the page because if you don't do that you can get rid of it really really fast and that's not always a good thing so here, you don't have to do that. I can still get it back to that wide of the page, and it totally will be fine. Now, I'm probably going to have to redraw this at some point, but I just want to put in this highlight just because it's sort of like a guide. Like, there's just so much stuff here that I'm worried if I don't put that in, I'm just going to be lost with what's going on. So, like, there's this highlight here of the chin. Does he have a cloth chin? I can't really tell. I don't think his head is wide enough. I think it should come out a little more. It's hard when you're drawing a character like this because there's no right. <laughs> it's like, oh, the head doesn't look right. Of course it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right to begin with. Oh man, he looks like an elf. That is not good. Let's cut back on that a little bit more. And also, remember, I'm not trying to make a perfectly accurate drawing from this photo. I'm just doing an approximation. The photo is there to give me a head start, but that's it. It's just a loose guide. And it depends on what you want to do. Some people may want to do something more interpretive. Maybe other people want to do something that's a little bit more specific. It's up to you. You just have to decide. By the way, we have a studio hangup, not hangup, hangout, coming up soon. And I was talking to Kat and Alex. I was like, hey, what do you guys want to do for the studio hangout? And I'd mentioned that I was going to be doing Baron Harkonnen on today's stream. And Alex was like, oh my God, can we just do a fan art stream? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Let's just do fan art on our studio hangout. I, I don't know. I thought that was really cool. 
I don't know if you all know this, but Alex is a mega nerd. He's really into Dune. He is super into D&D. Yeah. Actually, I really like his D&D illustrations that he's been doing recently. They're really, really cool. I need to deepen the eye sockets. I feel like I underestimated how large they are. And these brows are oh, so dramatic. He's also a little crooked, which I don't think I quite captured very well. So I'm gonna go in and try to mush him up a little bit more. I know I'm using too much black, but you know what, whatever. <laughs> this is not a piece that's about color. I'm really just trying to figure out the pan pastel right now. Okay, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. Comcuke says, ever try the Derwent ink tense blocks or pencils? If they're the ones I think you're talking about, I did use them on the stream where Jordan and I drew legs. And I like those a lot. Those are really fun. They're huge chunks of graphite, which is so cool. It just, I just, mean, it's very empowering when <laughs> you have like a big chunk of charcoal and you're just going at it. Neil is asking, does pan pastel erase like charcoal? It erases better. I find, especially with certain brands of compressed charcoal, they're really hard to erase. This is way easier, although it could be because I'm using the UFO paper. It might behave differently on charcoal paper. But so far, I'm finding that the pigment is so refined and everything just so soft that it's, it's actually a very easy material to erase. Blue Run says, David Lynch Dune is awesome. He says he's embarrassed by it. But that's because they ran short on the budget, so the effects got progressively more basic. I have to watch it again. I mean, it's hard because a sci-fi film like that, it's so dependent on the visuals. And they just didn't have the technology back then. I'm not saying you couldn't do it. I mean, look at Blade Runner. The original one is incredible. And they had so few effects to be working with. Actually, the cool thing I liked about Dune was the soundtrack by Hans Zimmer was very different than his other stuff. It wasn't that stereotypical mu movie music. And I read an article in the Times about it that was really fun. Reb Blunt, thank you so much for the super chat. And remember everybody that we do have the, if I could get the slide, fall raffle is going on. And remember, we also have a generous donor who's going to match your donation up to $2,000 through tonight, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the raffle page link is in the video description below. And I'm going to be sad if we don't use up every penny of that $2,000 donor match. That's just going to make me cry. <laughs> so everybody has to help out and contribute. So we really take advantage of that opportunity because that is so generous for that donor to provide that for us. All right, let's get back into this. I think I'm trying to figure out what order I want to do things in. Okay, so does everybody see this? The goop <laughs> that's coming down, the the little trails. I probably shouldn't do that until I'm like almost done. So I'm trying to figure out what are the parts that need to get done that are underneath all of the goop. You know what I might do? I might add the Karen Dash crayon just to solidify some of the drawing stuff. Just trying to figure out if I want to use the blue or the purple. Let me just see how the crayon works if I draw it over. Oh my God, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, it goes right over. Wow. 
that feels really good. Cause you know something I tried colored pencil and it didn't work great on the Yupo paper. It could just be the Yupo paper. Maybe it's fine on something else, but I am feeling like this is just a super mushy drawing right now. So I think I am going to go in with just a little bit of the crayon just to fix some of the drawing stuff because I mean, these applicators, they're wonderful, but they're so wide. It's just really hard to get a feel for that. I think things like, for example, the, the ear, I really have to get that more solid. And then just like really making this secure, this, <laughs> that feels kind of awesome. Oh my God, the Caran d'Ache crayon, it just glides. It's the Yupo paper. You guys, I'm having like a total love affair with the Yupo paper. Well, because I used it recently for the alcohol inks. In fact, I should break this so I can draw with the side of the crayon. Because then I can get in some broader strokes. Like I'm thinking some of the texture that's on his skin. I don't think it's going to look so great with the pen pastel. Uh, this might be a little bright. Let's try the purple. And if it's too distracting, I can go back to the black crayon. But I like the idea of having the purple crayon here as well. Ah, all right, let's see. Hmm, I don't know if it's dark enough. You know what I'll do? I'm going to do the black first. So I solidify the parts that are like really dark. And then I'll do like another passive purple to support the black. Because I'm finding that the purple is not really enough. And here's where I think I want to get a little more adventurous with the textures. And I'm going to make the textures more blunt than they should be. I'm doing that on purpose because what I'm guessing I'm going to do is put the pan pastel over it to fill in the blanks. In fact, I should do that now before I like cover the whole thing. So let's actually do that for a second. Let me just see what happens when I put the pan pastel over. Okay, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> I kind of love that. All right, let's do it. Because he has this like, I don't know, it almost looks like a tortoise shell pattern that's here. Because the other thing I'm noticing too is the pan pastel, I can't get this dark. And so it is fairly limited as far as the value range goes. So that's important to note. Because like here at the bottom of the chin, like I want this black. I can't have it be anything less than that. Oh, I'm really glad I'm using the Karen Dash. I feel like this would be really hard to do. I mean, maybe I'm just not very good at it though, because a lot of the literature that Pan Pastel gave me, I mean, people were doing absurdly detailed stuff, but that's not really how I work. So <laughs> too bad. I mean, here's the thing. It's like, I guess I could make it really detailed, but I don't really want to. I feel like it takes too long and I'm not so sure it necessarily looks better. trying to be more random here. I'm not really following every little dot as much as I am just trying to capture the, the basic feeling of that texture. Yeah, this is a good combination. The Caran d'Ache, the Yupo, and the Pen Pastel is pretty satisfying. Because you know something? I like charcoal, but I feel like I don't know, maybe I just did too much charcoal in art school, but I just don't like charcoal that much, even though I made my students use it so much. And so I like these, I guess you could call them almost like charcoal alternatives, like they have charcoal-like effects and a similar look, but the experience of using it is quite different. So maybe that's more what it is. Ooh, that is really fun. I am liking this combination. 
yay me for figuring that out. So tell me in the chat, who thinks they want to try out the pan pastels? I don't know. I'm kind of sold, you guys. You know what else I just noticed about this portrait is he's actually looking to the left. And so I have to make sure that I capture that. There, there's not a lot of space to articulate that in here. But I do think it's important because it does really change the way we look at this image. If we think about him as looking over to the left, like he's sort of suspicious in a way. So we'll see what I can do with that. Who knows if it's actually going to come across, but whatever. This is really going to help with the mouth because especially the mouth is just so slick looking. Look at that. I mean, this image is totally up my alley. It's monochromatic, it's portrait, it's figurative, it's a wonderful, icky character. It's perfect for me. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Contemporary Zoomera. I want to try pan pastel like now. <laughs> Slept near says Clara and the Purple Crayon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember that book. That is so good. Seven Angelic says, ooh, you could scratch it. Oh, now I'm really curious. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if I have any. Okay, like a barbarian. I'm going to try. Oh, I guess it doesn't really work like that. It's more like it, it pushes the pigment in. It doesn't scrape. Yeah, it doesn't really scrape at all. But you do get good textures. I mean, that's really cool. Let's see what happens if I do this. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like anything goes with this material. It's just so flexible. All right, let's go back into these marks. I mean, this is my favorite part, just blocking all this stuff in. This is totally my cup of tea because oftentimes on these streams, as you know, <laughs> you find me doing a lot of things I am not good at. And so it's like, wow, something that's actually in my element, <laughs> something that I feel like is my territory. <laughs> But I'll do it. It's all in the name of art education, right? That, that's that's what it is. Now he's got like this this area here. It's almost like alligator skin. Oh, it's so fun. I feel like I'm not being very adventurous with these marks, though. I, I have to I have to let myself play a little bit more. But then again, I am going to be using the pan pastel to fill in a lot of the blanks. So maybe it's not so bad that it doesn't look that clear right now. I mean, I really need the brow to get better because the brow is like half the facial expression. If I can't nail that, that's not going to pan out so well. Hmm, maybe I do do the drippy stuff with the crayon. Oh, I wish I had a bigger set. Well, I wonder, what if I use the purple for the goop? Let me just see. I'm going to do a little goop with the purple. Let's just see what it looks like. You 
because the thing about the crown is it's not going to get ruined. Like I can put the pan pastel over it and it's going to stay. And so maybe that's the separating layer that I want to try. Let's just see. I'm a little afraid to do it, but let's just try. I think I just need to get more aggressive. I'm sort of holding back and I don't like that. I can tell I'm holding back because I'm hesitating. I shouldn't do that. On the other hand, I don't want to rely too much on the crown to do everything for me because this really is about the pen pastel. So I'm a little hesitant to do too much more with the crayon because I might get too far ahead of myself, which I don't like that either. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit more crayon, but I'm going to jump pretty soon back to the pen pastel and it'll be kind of like a back and forth between the two materials so that they're more working side by side. I don't want them to get too competitive with each other. Actually, what I should do is go in and add some more down here with the crown because I don't want to lose that. Laura, thank you so much for the super sticker. We so much appreciate your support. All right. Let's see what I can do here. I'm going to do minimal crown work down here at the bottom, because I know a lot of it I want to stay being the pen pastel. So I'm not going to do that much, but I need to do enough that the crayon doesn't feel isolated. Like I want to put the crayon here and also here, because if it's only in the top part, it's going to look strange. That's a really good trick you can do just in general, when you add a new color, when you add a new material, if it's a mixed media piece, make sure you distribute that material so it's not just in one spot. Because then what happens is it, it looks like it doesn't fit there. And so by putting it in more than a couple spots, it starts to make more sense. I really should work on that background more. <laughs> Oh, you know, I should do it with the crayon. You know what? Let me move this over because actually that part of my drawing is off the screen a little bit. So let me make it so you can see that more because I just want to build up more of this surface up here because he is in this, what was it? It looked like this yellow muck. Hard to say. Okay. Who's drawing along with me? And if you are, how are you tackling the oily stuff? <laughs> I wonder what they used. Does anybody know what they used? They always use such strange things. I wonder how long he had to sit in this bath, how many times they made him like come in and out. Like that must've been really funny. All right, let's head back to the pan pastel. And now let's see what I can do to fill in some of the blanks. In fact, I think I'm gonna put in a little bit of warm color here. Like there's a little bit of a, almost like burnt sienna tint that I'm going to throw in. And I think that might help because I think it was getting a little bit too purple. I didn't really like that. Oh yeah, this is a really nice color. It's this color here. It looks pretty light, but it's actually a lot darker in value than I thought it was going to be, which I'm, I'm happy about. I, I need the value right now. I will say this is super fun in terms of layering. I don't know. 
know. I feel like these should be therapy. It's like just gliding it <laughs> across the <laughs> Yupa paper. It feels kind of amazing. I love that. I don't know. Maybe I do need to get more adventurous with the color. I suspect that maybe the color is starting to get a little dull. Maybe that's why I was feeling like I needed to add that burnt sienna. By the way, everybody, I just decided yesterday that we are adding a special stream tomorrow. I mean, it's not that special. <laughs> It's just a hangout. But I was thinking because tomorrow is the last day of the raffle that I want to be around. <laughs> so we're having just a hangout Q&A, just chat about whatever. And remember, when you support Artprof, you're helping us keep the lights on. But much more importantly, you are helping an artist who can't afford an art class. In fact, tell me now in the chat, who here would never take an art class just because maybe you live too far away or the cost is prohibitive? Who here is this your art education? Because what I'm finding is that it's not even sometimes the cost. I mean, a lot of times it is, but a lot of times it's just the lack of flexibility. Like we're doing the premium track right now and I was asking a lot of people, like, why did you guys decide to take this online class as opposed to, say, doing an in-person class? Because I know a lot of places are starting to open up now. And a lot of people said, well, listen, just with the logistics of the time I get home from my job and getting there and it's just so much. And they said just the convenience of being able to do it at home was just so worth it. And so what I'm realizing is access to things, it's not always about money. Oftentimes it's about just the logistics of your everyday life. And for some people, it, it's more than that. For some people, they have a disability and makes it hard for them to maybe attend an in-person class or a degree program. I actually had somebody who sent me something, I think it was a DM on Twitter, and they said, you know, I was in art school, but I had to leave because I had a medical condition and I thought it was over. But now because of your YouTube channel, I still feel like I can actually get a pretty good quality education. And let me tell you, I did not anticipate that. Like that never occurred to me before I started Art Prof that that would be one of the reasons why a lot of people can't do art school. Because I guess I just kept thinking, oh, it must be a cost issue, but it's not. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's something else. And then tell me in the chat why you can't take an in-person class. Is it for one of those reasons? Is it just cost prohibitive? Maybe you live in a place where there just aren't in-person classes. Because when I started Art Prof, I had this idea of, okay, here are the people that we can really help out, but it's so interesting. It's like, it has not turned out to be what I imagined it would be. So I'm always fascinated to hear the reason. Is YouTube your teacher? Is YouTube the only teacher you would ever have? Or is there another reason? I mean, this is why I love hanging out in the Discord because I can really hear about everybody's individual story. That's really, really fun, in my opinion. I was talking about this, I think it was in a blog post that I had written about how I kind of can't believe that a lot of the online art courses are not really giving a lot of feedback from the instructor. I was like, really? <laughs> like, how? isn't that sort of the whole point is to get that feedback from the instructor? But apparently there's a lot of online classes where most of the feedback comes from the community. And I just think that's strange. But also I think it's a bummer for the teachers because 
to me, the best part about teaching is getting to know people. When you teach, you learn things about people and people tell you things that they may not otherwise talk to people about. And I feel very lucky that I've had those interactions with people. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally starting to tackle some of the water. I knew I was putting it off a little bit. But I'm trying to follow more of the shape of these highlights a little bit better. So the highlights in the water don't feel so random. So I feel like I, I just put them in without really thinking enough about it. So like that's a highlight or here I, I should probably pull out more on that side. Whoops, just lost it. See, here's the thing. It's like, if you do that, it's so easy to erase. And wow, just the subtle shifts of tone you can get in here. They're, oh, they're beautiful. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? Everybody should look up Michael Mazur, Dante's Inferno, M-A-Z-U-R. He has a lithograph, maybe it's an etching, that really looks like this. It's like an oily guy <laughs> immersed in water. It really looks a lot like this. But that's exactly what I was thinking when I saw this image. I was like, oh my God, that's a Michael Mazur piece. <laughs> no, it's Dune. <laughs> Actually, that goes back to what Deep D and I were talking about the other day about art history and, and seeing those connections in so many different places. Because, yeah, this is from Dune, but to me, this goes right back to Michael Mazur's work. That's totally what I'm thinking about. And so anytime you can foster that connection with something you see somewhere, it's pretty exciting, I think. All right, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. Oh, this is an interesting point from Com Cuke. Art prof community is more helpful, whereas in art school, it feels like you're in a competition that you never even signed up for. Oh, God, tell me about it. it. It gets nasty. It's not pretty sometimes. Mike says, learned so much from YouTube in the last few years. Auto repair, how to make silicone elf or Vulcan ears, <laughs> tarantula husbandry, and of course, recently art prof. Well, my husband is working on these antlers for my kid's Halloween costume. He looked it all up on YouTube and they're amazing. I should post them in the Discord later on when they're finished. <laughs> Blue Ren says, for many online courses, the aim seems to be making top dollar with the least effort. Interacting with students takes time and energy. I know, but that's the best part. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just not money oriented enough like to me i don't really care about the money if i don't get to connect with anybody like that to me is not really teaching that's more just delivering information and that's not the same thing i think teaching at its core is about relating to people so starving artist says Fixed income these days, so not the opportunities to study. Lots of free YouTube artists, but mostly here because I love the real art school vibe. Well, that's sort of all I know. <laughs> so I, I don't know that I can do it any other way. But yeah, I mean, if you want classroom, curriculum, syllabus, I mean, I'm the biggest dork when it comes to all that pedagogical stuff. <laughs> all right, so Scott says, mental health and cost. I rely on content just as this. Sarah says, cost for me and time. Alex also says, cost is a huge factor. Joanna says, not knowing my professors ahead of time and trusting them is a huge reason I prefer art prof. Oh, I know. Somebody came into the Discord, I think it was a couple of days ago, and I think they said that they had just started this new class and that they didn't like the teacher very much and it just stressed them out so badly. And that really made me feel bad because it's like learning shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be super stressful and 
a bad experience. I mean, people were so nice in the discord. They were like, oh, well, maybe here are some things you could try and don't worry. And it, it was very nice that people helped out this person because I, I think we've all been there where it's like you don't really know what to do. And I think oftentimes students don't want to feel like they're asking for special attention or anything like that. And especially some teachers don't really make themselves that available. And so it's like, even if you could ask them a question, it's like, you don't really want to because it's a little bit too intimidating. But um, I don't know, it sort of depends. So I had a teacher at RISD who was so good. But the thing is, he wasn't a very proactive teacher you sort of had to go to him, which I know that's frustrating. In theory, you shouldn't have to do that. But the thing is, when you did go to him, he was great. He would just give you everything you needed. I think he just like didn't know how to organize the class or something. Like, I don't think it was that he didn't have good stuff to teach because he definitely did. I think he just didn't know how to deliver it well. And so you, you will get some people like that who are just like brilliant teachers, have great things to say, but just maybe don't really know how to organize themselves. And I mean, I guess it depends on the teacher and the context, but yeah, that can happen. I'm trying to get more of a transition between the crayon and the pen pestle. I'm trying to figure out if I need more crayon or if I need more pen pestle, because I'm worried if I put in too much crayon that it might start to get a little bit picky. Although, maybe what I need to do is switch to my erasers. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Although, let me build up this background a little more. Although, I sort of suspect <laughs> that my Baron Arconin is not really what people expect from Pan Pastel. <laughs> Somebody look up. Hashtag pan pastel on Instagram. Tell me what type of artwork shows up because the stuff that I've seen is like very realistic, like super colorful. I'm like, okay, this is not <laughs> your typical pan pastel image, but that's what you get when you come to me and ask me to draw something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pivot to the purple. And I think I am gonna do more crayon. I, I feel like, hmm. I don't know. I was thinking before, oh, that would be such a lame thing for me to try to rely on the crayon. But I think if I just put in like some very subtle, like light marks, it might give the Baron some of the structure I'm looking for. Because I think I did all the blunt stuff, but now it's like, I want to get the subtlety in there. I feel like this is too small. Oh, I wonder if I can scrape away that crayon. Let's see what happens. Let's just try the eraser. Maybe, oh, it's not getting rid of the crayon. All right, that's not going to work. That's OK. Ooh, I do like this blue. I just put this blue down here. This is a really nice blue color. I know you probably all can't see the colors that well on the screen, but I'll post it in the Discord later if anybody wants to see what that looks like. I'm going to spend some time with the eraser. So how about just in here on the facial features? I mean, this is where I just love my eraser stick. Who here has an eraser stick? I didn't know about eraser sticks. Actually, it was uh, one of my RISD students had one in class. I remember I was like, what is that thing? They're like, it's an eraser stick. I was like, oh my God, it's magic. It's like one of my favorite drawing tools ever. So if you have not gotten an eraser stick, you should, because these things are so fun and satisfying. Yeah, I need to spend some time with the eraser. I think I just want to give him a little bit more detail. I want to distribute the highlights more. Like there's a little sliver 
of his lower lid down here. And there's a tiny little bit here. It's so small. It's barely in there. I think I made it too bright. Let's bring it down. I mean, I confess these highlights are like my favorite thing. They're so fun. They're so fun. They're so satisfying. Let's work on that mouth now. So this is what I'm doing with my phone. I'm just like zooming way in so I can see those lines. And actually I should like really darken this. It, it's surprising how dark it gets in some of these spots. I mean, I just like dark things. So it's like anything I is going to get dark no matter what I do anyway. But I, I just love following the light as it moves across the surface. It's, it's so beautiful. Or like over here, there's a little bit of light that catches on his skin. And this is weird, this strange patch at the top. I'm trying to figure out how to handle that, but let's try this Faber-Castell eraser to do some of the bigger chunks. And then I'll go back in with the eraser stick and do some more. Oh, because I didn't even see this. There's like a highlight that sort of sneaks in over here on the right. That's really fun. <laughs> Jazz says, if you like eraser sticks, try an eraser shield. <laughs> Andrea says, how about eraser bows and arrows? Anyone tried those? We have not. <laughs> Oh, Elva says doll customizers use pan pastels for subtle face shading. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I could totally see how that would work well. Seven Angelic looked up Michael Mazur. Uh, I love Michael Mazur. <laughs> okay. Ah, shoot. Okay, I destroyed that. Okay, let's just, let's just back up a little. <laughs> See, that's what I'm noticing, though, is because the pan pastel is so flexible, I'm not really stressing about that stuff. Also, he's got, like, bubbles all over. If you zoom in, does everybody see all the, like, little dots? <laughs> They're everywhere. They're so gross. Yuck. <laughs> Although, I do think it's really cool that he floats. Look in the photo that's in the reference photo folder that's in the YouTube video description. I, I just love that he floats. I don't know what the story is. Maybe somebody here know, knows why he floats, but I think that's kind of awesome. I would like to float. I mean, I guess it would be more helpful if I could fly, but I'll take floating. Floating's good. All right, let's do some kneaded eraser so I can play more with my edges. Oddly enough, my finger does not work that well as far as smudging. It's like the applicator totally does the work for you. Like I keep thinking that I should smudge it with my hand, but the applicator is way better than my hand. I really want to build up this blue. The blue is beautiful. It's a really cool color. All right. I think a little bit more eraser stick work. I mean, I do think I'm closing in. This isn't a piece that I want to overwork. So it's probably one of those scenarios where I should stop a lot sooner than I think I should. So let's just do a little bit of, I don't know, what is that? It looks like alligator texture on his skin. 
I mean, he's pretty easy to draw because you kind of can't mess him up. You know, he's icky and gross. It's like, what am I going to do that people are going to go, oh my God, you messed him up. It's like, yeah, that's what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be really messed up and icky looking. So in some ways, I do think I'm giving myself a pretty easy assignment <laughs> trying to draw him. It's not so difficult. Ah, shoot, the crayon is getting a little in the way. So I guess what I would say is if you do want to do the crown, that you have to feel pretty confident about where you put it. Because it's like once you put it down, it, it does sort of get in the way. Maybe. Actually, there is quite a bit of blue up here in his shoulder. Maybe I'll fill that in some more. I feel like I let him get a little bit too bright here. It's hard because it's like that bright highlight is so seductive, but you have to be careful with it. It's sort of like a secret weapon. You can't use it for everything. Hi, Electri, popping in to say, I love your art and nice shading. Thank you very much. Oh, so Justin's saying it's a gluttony thing in the book, Dune. He is so overweight, he can't move without technology. Oh yeah, because he's got that stuff, those like cables and stuff coming out of his back. Okay, so Mike says, Herbert writes in Dune that the Baron possesses a quote, baso voice and is so grossly and immensely fat that he requires anti-gravity devices known as suspensors to support his weight. I gotta read this book. <laughs> I just, I'm not a good reader. I just, I get tired really fast. I know, it's really lame. <laughs> All right, let's do a little squinting. I just wanna do like another pass with the crayon, maybe to make the drips a little bit more subtle? I don't know. I'm sort of worried I'm gonna get too picky. Let's not do that. Let's actually just scan the piece and squint because I think I am getting a little sucked into details. So I'm just squinting and, and trying to go back in and block some of the larger shapes. I think down here, I let it get too light. So let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, that does look better. I think he has a little bit more form. I think here should get darker. I'm so surprised by this brown. This brown is, is so much thicker than I thought it was. It's really surprising me. Maybe you just see this, this area here, I think it just needs more dots. I think I made it a little bit too blank. I just need to give it a little more texture. Contemporary Samara says, I almost want to see more of that burnt sienna color. It's coming out beautiful. Yeah, you know, I should. Let me let me do another pass because I feel like I sort of stuck it in randomly, but really what I should do is see how to spread it. Oh, wait, that was too much. <laughs> Let's not do that. Because yeah, I don't want the burnt sienna to be so patchy. Like I, I want it to have a, I want it to make sense. I mean, if there is such a thing as making sense <laughs> in the Baron. But there are very visibly like warm areas and cool areas. And I feel like I do want that to come across. Because actually here, there's quite a bit of brown. Scott says, I have an eraser stick, an electric one. 
Oh, I've seen those. Those are really hardcore. I've never used one before, but they look like fun. All right. Well, Soyton Lee says the burnt sienna contrasts with the blue. That tells me that I need more blue <laughs> because I think the blue lost a little bit. So I'm just going to do another pass of blue on top. So I have a little warm, cool relationship going on. Maybe that will help. All right, everybody. Remember, you only have a half an hour left to take advantage of that donor match. I haven't looked at my email yet, but I really, really want to make sure that we use up every penny of that donor match because that is so amazing for that donor to offer that to us. Please hang out with me in the ArtProf Discord where we can post our work of the Baron. I will be in the post live streams channel. And a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. Really, really hoping to add more because I was so sad when I had to take off so many names that we lost our third slide. We really need it, guys. We need ongoing support. I know it seems like it doesn't take a lot to run this platform, but it takes an absurd amount of work and time and equipment. And it's not something that we can pull off on our own when you have no revenue. <laughs> it's a terrible business plan. I don't recommend it to anybody. Thank you so much, Jill Kama, for that super sticker. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.